If I'm walking into a business meeting, I dress in a certain way, but it's still me. It's still Lan mm -hmm. and Comme des Garçons. It doesn't even matter what designers it is. It represents me, who I am, what I think I look most powerful in, and how I feel most powerful. And people respond to it. And then there's how I dress on a date, and all these different things, mm -hmm. and it's all, none of it's typical because I'm not typical. I'm originally from Dallas. My parents, they grew up in pretty strict, conservative Southern families, but they were both like the black sheep. And I kind of grew up with this very punk rock mentality. Everything revolved around fashion for me. Like I did every single book report on Chanel or other fashion designers or models. I was obsessed with Christy Turlington and Arthur Elgort. Mm -hmm. And I used to do book reports on coffee table photography books. I used to sketch clothes. It all started around like 10 years old. And it was, I was looking back at it recently and I was like, oh, I was like, that's when my parents got divorced. Mm -hmm. It became my mm -hmm. healthy escapism that I was like, oh, these magazines, you know, I started collecting magazines at 10. It was the mascot at my school, which was really fun. I was like, would dress up like a big wildcat. I didn't have to worry about fitting in because I was in this very individual role, which made me comfortable. I was always wearing like men's tailored jackets with like a, a punk's pleated skirt and like an oversized men's button down shirt. And my mom worked for Neiman Marcus, so I grew up in department stores in the mall. You know, I left school when I was 16 and got a GED. As I've gone through the business, I've started to see that the people who are the most successful and that I respect the most are not scared to do what they feel like is important. I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I just started doing it at a young age. Sometimes I like wearing clothes that I know will trigger people just because it's just kind of like wake up. You know, there's another perspective. I like to buy things that I can wear forever. I'm wearing the same bags, I've been wearing mm -hmm. some of the same clothes for like 10 years. When new trends happen, I just go into my storage unit. I'm like, okay, what fits into what's going on? It's like, I love mermaid mm -hmm. surfer girl. 80s Dogtown Z-Boys surfer skate culture. These are Giles pajamas. I just fell in love. He's got the most amazing print ability. I have like my bear daddy look that I do. And these um, suspenders are from Leatherman. Denim on denim is one of my favorites too because it reminds me of home. It's called the Cowboy Tuxedo. Necklace kind of gives me a little bit more of that punk vibe that I like. It's an old Chloe necklace slash bracelet. And I just love that it's like such a tacky ripoff of Fendi. Um, but this is how kind of I feel about fashion most of the time. It's like, you never know if someone's your friend. I have my Rick Owens boots that are my, basically my uniform and somehow my security blanket. I love red. I own loads and loads of red. Everyone looks good in red. I launched Bedhead when I was 18. The CEO, he kind of said to me, do you want to do PR? And I just quit modeling because I hated it. And I was 18. I could go work as the hostess at P.F. Chang's or I could have like actually like a real job and get to do cool stuff. I'll never forget, I went to Jane Magazine to meet with the beauty director there. Fashion director at the time comes in and I guess she had just gotten back from the shows and she puts the McQueen tape in and it's the show where Shalom gets spray painted by the robot R's. Mm -hmm. And I was like trying to do this PR appointment but I was watching the show and I was like, holy shit. That is what I want to be doing. Nobody was doing anything like that that was, it was a little bit scary. And I've always been in kind of to that adversity, like having high and low and mm -hmm. different expressions of what women and beauty are. I just, I kind of made a uh, decision in that moment that I need to move to New York and I need to move into fashion. KCD offered me a job producing Versace. It was my first job with them. Suddenly, I wanted to be in fashion, and there I was. I threw up a lot in the beginning. I was like, oh my god, I was got so, I just was so nervous. You basically have eight days to build a $2 million show experience, and then you rip it all down. I left to do, um, to take an assistant position with Marie Amelie. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is the only thing I would ever leave the fashion show production for. I'm still styling, which is great, and I'm the editor at large for Love Magazine, and Katie Grand has been one of my hugest champions and mentors. Fashion doesn't matter when you don't think of the people behind it. It's about the people, to me, who make the fashion and make the images and make the clothes and put Absolutely. them together. Well, I really wanted to be able to create a portal where people can come and be inspired by fashion and what's going on. I want to inspire people and empower people because that's what I wanted when I was a kid. I've been on a fashion tour since I was 20 years old mm -hmm. or 18 years old. I haven't. I live in hotels. I live on planes. Mm -hmm. I haven't had like a real home and I was ready for that. I ended up getting a place in North County, San Diego and I just fell in love with it. The quality of life is what's important there. Kind of the opposite of the life that I've been living. It's like workaholism isn't really that approved of there. We're always waiting for comfort. One day when I'm an editor at this magazine, I'm going to be really comfortable. It's going to be perfect. It's like I've crossed off those things and it's like I'm not comfortable. And so there's this kind of false 
being of waiting for comfort. And, and I think most successful people in the world are able to be comfortable being uncomfortable.